and somebody who doesn't know want to come and join us. And they just kind of stand around and this drop and then pretend to suddenly join your conversation. And so it feels like that person will be in, in local language, you know, KK, you know. Ah, KK want to stand there and want to join you. So <laughs> no KK. Here at Image Works, oh, we Singapore's. Really? Yes, we have. <laughs> okay. So we're here at Image Works, Singapore's leading image consultant. They make you look good and they create your branding through people. Did I get that right? Yes. Okay, this is right. senior image consultant Cindy Tian because like, we've got a lot of wisdom in this lady. I've known her for quite a while. She's always looking at her best. Always. And so my first question is, Cindy, you ready? Yes. As an image consultant, explain to us why ladies look good in heels. I notice if they wear flats, they look a lot different as if they put on heels. Mm, that's a very good question. And in this day and age, a lot of people are wearing sneakers to work, and I'm personally a big fan of sneakers. But there is something about heels uh, from a scientific perspective, because most ladies, and when I say most, I'm excluding the supermodels of the the supermodels of the world, we all know that they have got really long legs. But if you look like a, at a regular lady, most of us, if we were to stand up straight and we were to kind of split our body into two parts, the upper half and the lower half, usually our lower halves are much shorter than the upper half. So what it means is that visually, most of us look like we have shorter legs. Right. And we can change the perception of that by wearing the correct clothes, the correct height of the waist, and of course one of them is by changing the shoes. Mm -hmm. So when we wear heels, it helps us to lengthen our legs. So at one glance, straight away we look taller and slim. So ladies with longer legs or slimmer legs looks better? Yes, from a visual perspective. It look, looks more elongated, it looks slimmer. Does it apply to dogs? Uh, no, I have not seen dogs wearing their heels. <laughs> I, mean, like short legs, I, mean. I actually like dogs with short legs. Okay. I think that they're really cute. And will men like girls with short legs? Or? I don't know, you can tell me. Alright, and uh, what else? Oh, so the, the second thing I think it would be primarily because of the posture. Because when we wear heels, you know, heels are never a very comfortable pair of shoes, quite honestly. When we wear slippers, when we wear sneakers, we'll just thumb around and flat our feet. And, and it makes us more likely to want to slouch a little bit. Right. But because heels are not the most comfortable pair of shoes, right. we actually have to stand properly to be able to balance ourselves in them. Like better posture. That's right, yeah. So when we do that, we stand properly, it makes us look a little bit more upright, right. it makes us look a little bit more elevated, and hence the look becomes more poised. Mm, okay. Yeah. So it really helps with the posture. Right. And does a sharp pointy toe shoes look better on people? Yes, if you want to look taller, generally the more pointy-toed ones will make the legs look a little bit longer. What about for men? Similarly, so uh, usually when we talk to our clients, some of the things we talk about is what kind of look do you want to achieve at the end, end of the day. So let's say you want a more elegant look, mm -hmm. then the pointier it is, the better it is. Right. Yes. Okay. Wow, that's a lot of good wisdom there. And uh, similarly, why do you... Girls, you know, when they bun up their hair like those SQ girls, and they always look very nice and charming, especially those skinny ones you know, when they bun up their hair. Uh, they look good, even from the back. Uh, is there a psychological reason why showing the part of the neck? The neck, right? Yeah. So interesting, because there was a survey done by Glamour magazine a couple of years ago, and they actually asked a group of men, what are the parts of a girl that turns them on? Mm. And you'll be surprised to know that it's not where you think it is. Okay. Okay. One of it was definitely the neck. All right. So the neck is considered quite a central part of a woman's body. Uh, so when men look at it, they find it attractive. For girls, when we look at it, all we see is like slimness. Yeah. So that's attractive uh, a lot to a man. I think the other reason is unless someone is severely overweight, mm -hmm. I'm talking about a regular sized person. We all have the certain parts of our bodies that are very skinny. Right. And we call that the skinny bits. Okay. So there are five skinny bits in a person's body. That is what yeah. five so I'm going to have you to guess. Starting with the bottom part, what do you think are the five skinny bits? The calves? Uh, no. Slightly lower. The heels? The ankles. The ankles so the ankle will be the first skinny bit of a person. It's usually the smallest. What does it mean that that's the 
sexy part, the attractive part? It's, it's a small part. Okay. It's a small part uh, in, in relative considered to the other parts of the body. Right. So if you think about your entire leg, yeah. the ankles are the skinniest part. Right. Yeah. And then the second part is actually the knees. Right. The knees are usually much skinnier. Okay. The third one is actually the waist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's indented, right? So mm -hmm. skinny. That's why you want the hourglass look. That's right. All right. Yeah, the fourth one would be the wrist. Oh. The wrist is the smallest part of the woman's arm. Mm -hmm. And then the last part it's is actually the neck. Okay. So when you're mentioning the skinny bits, how do people, listeners, uh, take advantage of that information? So ladies being ladies, a lot of us, I'm not saying all, but a lot of us feel that we want to look slimmer. Right. And the best part to look slimmer is by showing off the skinny bits. Okay. Yeah. So if I were to wear a total long sleeve all the way, as compared to me showing a little bit of my wrist, I would look a little bit slimmer when I show off a little bit of my wrist. Mm. Yeah. Rather than me wearing a total neck all the way up, if I reveal a little bit of the neck, it makes me look slimmer. Right. And it also elongates. So if you think about it, when we meet someone for the first time, what would be the first thing that we look at usually? Which part face. of the person? Yeah, the face, right? right? So we call that the first 12 inches of the person. Okay. So the first 12 inches. So if you think about the 12 inches, it would be the hair, the face, and the neck. So the slimmest part between the face, the hair, and the neck is obviously the neck. Right. Okay. Yeah. So that would be the main thing, why girls look a lot more slimmer and more slimmer. And of course, it's always the clean look, right? Right. So you think about girls like in SQ and in nurses, the, the intention is always for the patients or the customers to feel that this person is professional, neat, clean and ready to work. Mm -hmm. So when the hair is back and they're not fussing with it, mm -hmm. it makes them look like they're ready to be able to do what they need to do professionally. Okay. Did you get that? Yeah. Hope so. Mm -hmm. Very good. Um, next question. I noticed that females when they're in the uniform, they look good. Even men when they're in the uniform, they look good. Why? Why is the psychological reason that a lady in a military uniform or in a pilot uniform, they look really good? Tell us. Well, I think a lot about uniforms is very much psychological. So, for example, when we see, even for myself as a lady, when I see a man wearing a policeman uniform or, or an army uniform, right, the effect is that we tend to associate the uniform with them doing a job of a very noble nature. Mm -hmm. So like I see a firefighter in uniform and go like, wow, this person is doing such a noble job and he's saving people's homes. When I see a man in army uniform, think, wow, this person is fighting for our country. Right. So again, one psychological effect. The other thing why they look good is because uniforms, when they are, when they are designed by the designer and the tailors, the fabric is meant for when, when the people wear their uniform, it's meant to last a long time. So the employer can issue two to three sets of uniforms mm -hmm. and you might have to wear it for two or three years. So it tends to be thicker? It tends to be thicker and the fabric is more taut. Right. And what it means is that it creates structure. Mm. So when there is structure on a the person, there are angularity and their are lines. And it makes a person look smart with their angularity. Right. So it's a clean, polished look. Well, I didn't know that. And also, if you think about uniforms, so like, again, nurses, policemen, what colours are they usually? Um, dark blue, dark blue, or, yeah, teal, teal, white, yeah. or white, right? So the choice of colours are also very intentional. Right. Yeah, the most trustworthy colour I would say is usually blue. Okay. So navy blue, light blue, and white. These are the very intentional colours that uniforms are usually chosen. Wow. And you will never, you will rarely see a uniform that is bright red, very red. Or like shocking green. Wow. It's always a cleaner, more trustworthy. Tell us why I'm, I'm, uh, female golfers always make me turn my head and look at them. They look so sexy. Why? I hope to be able to answer your question, but maybe it's a, it's a sexy brain that you have. Okay, I think generally it's still the neat and clean though. Because remember a lot of them, they wear white. Right. So you think about the white cap. Mm -hmm. White cap already looks very clean. And, and they look nice in cap yes, and their they ponytails sticking out. And the hair is always pulled back. Right. So clean and neat look, and they're usually wearing a polo tee. Right. Rather than and a cap sleeve sometimes. Yeah. Is it showing off certain sexy part of the, the arm? Not so much of that, but it's it's more of the polo, the collar of the polo tee, creating structure around the neck. Okay. So it frames this part of the neck very nicely, right. and they usually tuck it in. Right. To tailor shorts or skirt or mm. this. Right. And then they finish up the look with usually white sneakers. 
Right. So that entire look looks clean, look neat, and look useful. Mm -hmm. And that always works, right? Always. Look clean, neat, and useful. Always works. Yeah. Okay, so now to more personal question. Yes. Like with the good looks, uh, uh, do strangers approach you, do men approach you and they talk to you from uh, like just break into a conversation? Which are the type that you don't mind, which are the type that's such a good type? Thanks for the compliment by the way. Wow, men approaching me. Does that still happen? I think when I was younger it happens a lot more. I think now maybe it's more from a business perspective. Okay. Um, what do I like and what do I dislike? About think, the approach. About the approach. I think what is a little annoying to me is when somebody... So let's say I have a conversation with a group of friends and somebody who doesn't know want to come and join us and they just kind of stand around and eavesdrop and then pretend to suddenly join the conversation. And so it feels like that person would be in, in local language you know, KK, you know. Oh. KK want to stand there and want to join you. So <laughs> no KK, okay? Like, you know. Yeah, no KK. And, and try, please do not use pickup lines. Like, oh, hey, I like your smile. Okay? That is so 1980s. Right. It doesn't work anymore. Uh, what I personally like is somebody who is just straightforward and respectful, comes and joins the group and just say, hi, hey, excuse me. Sorry to interrupt, but me, I join. Yeah, join and that to me is respectful and I usually will not say no to that. Okay. It's the people that we deem to be like creeps, right? Like standing around, hanging around, I'm chilling, and walk away. That type is a little bit scary. Yeah, in, in our book, we talk a lot about this word called creepy. Mm. Yeah, you look creepy, nobody wants to talk to you. So yes. you can go figure out what creepy is. Yes, yes. So don't have any pickup lines. My suggestion is no pickup lines. Mm. I have another question here is uh, do you find it easy considering that you have an advantage of good looks and you're always well poised uh, to talk to people? Let's, let's um, have that question in two bits mm. to other women and to men. Mm. I, I again, again thanks for the compliment you know that's very flattering. I generally don't find that I, I can't say that it's easy but it's not tremendously difficult. I think the first thing is because I have been working in jobs that require me to meet strangers all the time. Right. So I've been practicing this since I was what, in my teenage years. Yeah. So I think one key to this is just keep practicing, right? Yeah. Because if you don't do it, then you will never do it. Right. So if you're practicing long enough, it becomes easy. And the second thing is that I always ensure that I try and dress my best and feel good. And when you feel good, you, feel, you come across confident and people can tell it. Have you like approached someone and they snub you and they say, I want to talk to you, like, who are you, what do you want? I honestly don't recall that ever happening okay. before. So that was what I was trying to tell Cindy earlier in lunch. When men talk to a woman, the man's a creep sometimes. And when a woman approaches a man, it's good to be a man's lucky day. So ladies, that's your advantage, okay? Uh, the, book, the book that I've written, well, it helped a lot on the men. That's why we have Cindy here to show you the women's perspective and uh, all those great tips that she sh shared with you so far. I think that's valuable and yeah, uh, remember them and, and use them. Okay. And anything else to add on that point uh, before I really interrupted you? No. Um, so whether I would approach a man or women, I I think to me it's not very much different. That that's for me, and I've never really been rejected per se. Mm. Of course, sometimes when you join a group and they're busy having their own conversation, they might not look as welcoming. But generally, it's not a difficult thing to do. Can you, can you share with us how your current, your husband, I mean, not current husband, your <laughs> husband, <laughs> current husband, <laughs> your husband approached you the first time? How about was that incident? Oh gosh, oh, he's going to freak out when he hears this. You know what, he didn't approach me, we actually met in church. Okay. So he, I think, I think... You like his press, dear lord. I think... <laughs> Saw me from afar, right. and he added me on social media. Okay. Yeah, so he sent me a message on social media on the, the private messaging, and he said, "Hey, it was nice meeting you today." And in my mind, like, who's this person? I don't even recall seeing you. Really? Yeah. So you didn't even meet him, but he said, "Nice meeting you today." Yeah. And how do you feel? And I was like, "Oh, okay. I don't mind since I'm single. I don't mind being observed by someone." Uh, at that point of time, so because our, our that church particular church meeting was quite a big group, I think there was easily like 20 to 30 people, so I probably didn't really notice him at that point. Okay. But apparently, he did notice, notice me, so he sent me a text message on Facebook, and then we kind of started chatting a little bit from there. And after that, we had another little church group gathering, and that's when we started talking. And they did? 
uh, not yet, but that's when, that to me, that was the first time I actually saw him in person. Okay. Yeah, so it's, um, he was sending me, a, but his message wasn't creepy, right? It was just like, hey, good to meet you today, that kind of thing. And your first meeting with him, what was his first opening few lines that made you decide this? Oh, this because guy's we recognize each other from the Facebook chat. Right. So he came to me and said, so you're Sydney, right? So I said, oh yeah, 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 yeah. So we started chatting and then, you know, we started asking questions like, you know, where do you work, that kind of thing. And we realized that his office was very near my home. And okay. we started talking about simple things like food and all that. And before, common ground things. And yeah, common ground cool. things. And I remember that this was actually at East Coast Park. Because we were having like an afternoon or thing. And before we knew it, we enjoyed the conversation so much that everyone else actually walked like, like 15 meters away from us, ahead of us. And they we were just like, <laughs> <"Chat day." laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess kind of. Yeah. So that's really how we started uh, becoming friends. Okay. Yeah. And when was that moment you knew? He was a man for you. Huh? That's the whole brown line, by the way. When did I know when he was, was a man for me? When was you knew that you would like to spend the rest of your life with him? Gosh. But I can, I can tell you when I realised that, hey, I wanted this guy's not for you. It was, we have actually gone for a couple of dates already, right. going out for movies and drinks and, and, and all, and I still wasn't sure, and I didn't, when, because I'm someone that if I'm not sure, I don't really want to announce it to my parents, right? Mm. And so what happened was we went for a church camp right. and at that time we were not a confirmed couple yet. Right. And during that church camp, even though it was five days and because that church camp had like 5,000 people in it, it was in Malaysia. Right. So we had a lot of activities during the church camp and that five days it was like I didn't even see him very mm. much. So because we are both away and we are so occupied all day, we didn't get to text each other, we didn't see each other, we are like so close and yet so far. I felt like I missed him so much. Oh, that's a very good sign. Huh. So when we went you back to Singapore, him, thinking about him, that's when you know you're yeah, in love. Yeah, gosh, I think I really like this guy. Okay. And the moment we touched down in Singapore, that was when I said, hey, I'm having dinner with my parents tonight, would you like to join? Wow. And he said? Of course I do. <laughs> okay, very good. So, uh, any any quick social skill tips that you could share with your audience that I didn't cover? Social skill tips, well, I think the main thing is that if you have somebody that has not gone clubbing before, maybe you want to try clubbing. When people are in social situations, they are not, they don't take themselves too seriously. Okay. So when you go for an event and you go in with a very serious demeanor and you want to ask people what are your next five to ten goals in your right. career, it disconnects people. Right. But when you're able to be relaxed, you make other people relaxed. Yeah. They're more in so, a playful mode, exactly. more casual. Be in a playful mode. Compared listen to a networking event, right? Absolutely. Right. Right. Listen to some music, get your body a little bit more excited in terms of energy and movement. Okay. If you need to get yourself a glass of wine, right. make sure you're relaxed. Because when we're serious, people feel that we come across as desperate and uptight. And nobody wants to talk to someone. Mm. Yeah, so those would be my tips. Wow. Okay, so thank you for being on this video. Thank you. For this last minute, last one minute of the program. Um, what are you up to these days and is there anything like you want to tell your viewers about you? Uh, so, well, I have been doing uh, branding for the last six and a half years, almost seven years now. I work with a company called Imageworks. So this is quarter one, and quarter one is usually a time where uh, customers don't do a lot of training engagement. So what we do is we take this time to develop content. So I'm actually starting out a book project. Yeah, okay. It's something that's been boiling my heart for a long, long time. Have you got the title yet? I haven't confirmed the title okay. that I want it to be, but it's going to have to do with the word presence. Yeah. So how can we build inner strength and outer influence? Okay. So stay tuned. That sounds really interesting. So thank you, Cindy, so much. We would like to hear from you more often and see you more present in the circuit. <laughs>